Are we doing a story today or what? No, never. <laughs> You're listening to the Dune Steve Audio Fiction Magazine. And now here's your hosts, Rish Outfield. The only thing I love more than failures are guys who beat themselves up more than they actually should about their failures. Yeah. And Big Anklevich. I don't get chicks anyway. I'm married, so I don't have uh, uh. sex at all with anyone. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Dune Steve Audio Fiction Magazine. Oh, hello. Tales of Ribaldry. Mm-hmm. I am your host, Evelyn Quinn. Mm-hmm. Um, actually, I'm your host, Big Anklevich. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm Rish Outfield, Esquire. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, today we've got another episode for you. This is kind of a special uh, episode because we're going to be uh, busting out a sequel. This is a sequel. This is the first sequel that you've ever written on our show, isn't it? Uh, Have we ever... Or is it really a sequel? It's more well, like a... I don't think a, there's a sequel. Though. It's a next quill. What do they... Do they have a name for... A side quill. <laughs> a side quill. There you go. This is a side quill. It's a NyQuil. It's a knockoff is what this is. It's <laughs> this a is cheap quill. <laughs> cheap quill. There is, yeah. This is the crappy yeah. Yeah, direct-to-video version of an earlier successful film. That's right. <laughs> oh, this, sorry, this story. This was made in Korea. <laughs> yeah. North Korea, even. So oh. They didn't even get food for doing it. Poor folks. But anyways, yeah, this uh, today's story is called Fatherly Pride. Mm. <laughs> and, yeah, I'll bet. <laughs> this story was written by Rish Outfield. If you recall, way back in March 24th of 2013, you might recall episode 141, Wedded Bliss by Rish Outfield. Now, this was a little sketch. I don't know that it was meant to originally be its own story. I think it was just going to be a sketch that we kind of ran at the start of the show and then we did the show. But it turned out to be like 15 minutes long, so it was plenty long to... Was it really that long? I think it was, that, or at well, least close to it. And that was the it. year that we only got like eight episodes done the whole year. Right. So we needed... We were desperate episode. for episodes, so we were like, no, we're going to... We'll just use this as an episode. This is... Uh, we recorded that one live at New Media Expo 2013, this one that we have for you today was recorded live at New Media Expo 2014. This time around, though, there's two cheap cools to follow. Okay. So we have to, this one plus one more is what I mean by two cheap cools to follow. Anyways, yeah, it's, it's another one of the uh, neighbors meet at a neighborhood barbecue and they talk about things. You can guess perhaps by the title they might be prideful of... Their fathers. Their fatherly accomplishments. So, yeah, we will uh, jump into that story. And then we will come back to you with some more about the story and whatever the hell else we got to say after. Check it out. (gasps) Fatherly Pride. By Rish Outfield. Hey, Paul. I wanted to thank you for inviting us to your barbecue. Hey, thanks for coming. I wasn't sure how many would come. Uh, Who'd you invite? Oh, everybody on the block. But I appreciate you coming. Oh, here comes John. The Little League coach, right? Oh, so you know him? Yeah, we met at... Hey there, nice barbecue. Paulie, isn't it? Paul, yes. Uh, Thanks for coming. Oh, I love free food. Almost as much as free love. This is George. Do you two know each other? Oh, yeah. Our kids used to go to school together. He's just being modest. I used to date his wife. She wasn't my wife at the time. That would have been awkward. Not as much as you'd think. (laughs) (laughs) Here, uh, have a soda. What, did George drink all the beer? That's so like you. Oh, I didn't serve any beer. Sorry. That's okay. Red meat's still pretty good. Thank you. Pretty nice yard you got here, Paul. Thanks again. I mean it. Not a single weed on the lawn. And all the trees are still in spring bloom. Yes, well... Even though it's July. Enough about nature, you tree hugger. George has always been one of those sensitive guys, if you know what I'm saying. No, 
Is sensitivity a bad thing, John? Not for some guys, if you know what I'm saying. Sorry, no. He's just trying to be funny, Paul. So, you've got kids? One. That's my daughter over by the swings. Ah, playing alone, is she? Eh, She can be shy. I ought to introduce her to my daughter. Get her out of her shell a little. That would be nice. Uh Uh-oh, don't start George in on his daughter. Why is that? He can be a little proud. Do you not have a daughter, John? Oh, hell no. All sons for this guy. Got a newborn, and then there's the apple of my eye. He's ten. That's him over there. The boy in the pool? No, the one who pushed him in the pool. Oh, I see. There he goes. Look at him run. Yep, best of the best that boy is. Just like those old movies with Eric Roberts and Phil Lee. Well, I, I didn't see those. You're missing out. Almost as good as a Jeff Speakman flick. Huh? Is there such a thing? Okay, okay. Your kid is pretty good, too. That's not what I meant. Uh, but now that you mention it... Uh-oh, here he goes. You're pretty fond of your daughter, then, George? Oh, yeah. She's daddy's little girl. Oh, sweet. My daughter got straight A's on her report card. Good for her. My Annabeth gets pretty good grades. There's more to life than just schoolwork, guys. Why? How'd your boy do in school? My son's school doesn't believe in grades. They feel that life's real measurement of success happens in the workplace and on the playing field. Annabeth got a B in social studies. Sometimes she gets these ideas sitting off by herself. She says strange things. You gotta watch those kids, Polly. They end up off the rails, you know? Not all of them, John. But some. Most, Stephen. Annabeth does all right, guys. Sure, sure. I bet she probably excels in other ways. Yeah, right. You could say that, sure. My daughter has already got the boy's attention. She's going to be a beauty, I'll bet. Like her mother. What's that supposed to mean? I meant like her mother used to look when you first got married. Oh, okay. Sorry. No offense. Yeah, you've got a nice daughter. Well, she's no Cynthia Rothrock, but she's all right. Thanks, John. I'm sorry, who? Oh, she's great. She was in Angel of Fury and China O'Brien. Doesn't ring a bell. Lady Dragon? Above the Law? Sorry. Anyway, you should hear my daughter sing sometime. Oh, she sings? Oh, yeah. She's got perfect pitch. Nice. And my boy is a regular Reb Brown, action hero in the making. My daughter sings like an angel. My daughter is an angel. Amazing, really. Her talents... She plays the piano pretty well for an (laughs) eight-year-old. Never had a lesson. You know, Red Brown in his prime, like in Strike Commando, and your Hunter from the Future, and Cage, of course. She could move you to tears singing Ave Maria, or Amazing Grace, her battle hymn, or the Humpty Dance. Oh, I'm not exaggerating. An actual angel. But Red Brown when he was young, before he got fat. I don't think he knows what you're talking about, John. No, really. My daughter was not born. She just appeared one day in a flash of white light. And my daughter is excellent at sports. Basketball, soccer. My son, too, already has six trophies. Gymnastics, tennis, track and field, water polo. He's a natural athlete. He can beat grown men at arm wrestling. My wife wasn't even pregnant. And there she was, at the foot of our bed one evening, while a heavenly choir sang something in Pakistani. My daughter always smells good. Always. Not my son, no. He smells pretty ripe. Not really something to boast about, John. Sure it is. He smells like a little man, like a boy should. My daughter has never once gone to the bathroom. And her hair is just naturally shiny. My son is incapable of getting a bad haircut, even if you tried. My daughter can make water boil just by looking at it. And my... Wait, what? I asked my wife once just to ruin his hair, cut it with hedge clippers if she wanted, and it just came out. No, not you, Johnny. What did you say about your kid? Which part? The part about reviving dying wildlife, or dead house plants, or making water boil? So, my son could make macaroni and cheese when he was three. You say she can heal? Your daughter? Oh, Annabeth still struggles with healing sick people, but animals she's pretty much got down. You're kidding. Nope. And remember when Mayor Suddeth went to the hospital with that brain thing? My son met Mayor Suddeth one time. His soccer team was in the championships and... Well, for a moment there, the doctors were sure he was going to die. They started writing up their official statements and contacting the family and telling his friends to get rid of all of his porn. But then my daughter put her hands on the TV and he got better. 
Yeah, but he's still retired. He didn't get better, exactly. But your daughter healed him through the television, Paul? Not even touching him? Yep. She's been able to do that for a while now. She tried it on characters in movies and stuff, like Bambi's mom and the Lion King's dad. But we had to explain that they were just fictional characters. That's a joke, right? Nope. Not the brightest fluorescent, that daughter of yours. I'll say that if you will. She did manage to bring Tony Stark back at the end of the Avengers, though. Right. Tony Stark didn't die. The Hulk yelled at him, and then he woke up and said something homophobic, remember? Well, the first time we watched it, he did die. Annabeth didn't like that so much. Just Whedon's an a-hole. Okay, okay, your daughter's got some qualities. But can she make macaroni and cheese? No, not so much. Well, okay then. I think I'm going to go over and see how some of these other neighbors are. That's a good idea. I, I guess I'll do that too. Have a good one, Polly. You too. Okay, welcome back. Was that even a story? I don't, Does that qualify as a story? I don't know that it qualifies as a story or not, but we pretended that it was one. Are we talking about last year's or are we talking about this one? This one, too. I think they, they all, you have to pretend that they're worthwhile. I mean, you have to pretend that they're stories. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but, you know, these things are, are written because it would be fun to perform them in the group. Yeah. And uh, this one was no uh, exception. I didn't have a part in this one, so I could just sit back and wince. <laughs> um, but, you know, just reading them in somebody's room. Who did we read this one in? The Brian's room? actual owner of the room. I think Marshall and Brian and Dave, maybe, all shared the room. I did think, they really? Yeah, I think they were all roomies. I'm not sure who roomed with who. Um, it's but, like a key party, isn't it? Yeah. It's New Media Expo. It's it's pretty pretty crazy. Welcome, neighbors. This was fun. It was almost the same, although this time around, I guess we probably had a slightly larger audience when we recorded. And uh, yeah, it was it was a good time, you know, to be able to just sit around and and the the funny thing was several times, you know, we hadn't read it beforehand, so sometimes we'd be saying lines and we'd be caught off guard by what our character would say. And yeah, I, there was some crazy stuff in there, so we would say some weird crap. Well, I, we'll give a cast list briefly. If... Oh, okay. Uh, the cast uh, of today's story was Big Anklevich as... I was character not Paul. I must matter. have... Yeah, I was... I bet you were... George. George huh? uh, yeah, I think I was George, because you said that's why I was playing George, because that was the name of my character all the way back in our movie from college. So you assumed that was the one that would be me, and it turned out you actually gave me the wrong character, because you wanted that's me right, to be I, Brian's douchebag I character. I told you, okay, you're a blowhard, all right? You got to one-up everybody. But it turned out that was Brian's <laughs> character, and by then it was too late, because you'd already... Yeah, Done we'd read like half the half the story already, so uh, we just went on with it. But yeah, originally you wanted me to be this super douchebag, which is what Brian Lincoln ended up playing, and I think his name was John, and then Paul was by Marshall Latham. We actually we just took we had six guys in our group, and so we had two barbecue sketches with three guys apiece. So we just divided it down the middle. So the next barbecue sketch, which is coming down the line at some point. We'll uh, have the other three of us on there. Yeah. I hope one. people get a kick out of these. They, they're really fun to write. They are very much like Saturday Night Live sketches. You can see them having a barbecue set. And every three or four episodes, like, okay, we're going to do another one of these where these guys are boasting about something. Um, and you'll hear what the next one is about unless saner heads prevail and I... We don't run it, <laughs> but I thought it would be fun, and I, I feel kind of bad that the, the ladies just have to sit and watch. And so I, I well, last year's at least they, one of the ladies got to come in and yell at us. Yeah, but if somebody was just like, "Hey, you know, we, we should call all of these barbecue sketches Sausage Fest One Two, or if they said, "You know, that's the, you know insensitive or whatever the deal is," I couldn't argue with that. And so very recently, I did start writing an all girl equivalent of this for next if we go again next year there will be no dudes but it's at a sorority house oh. so you'll know it when you hear it mid 
2016. And hopefully the ladies will feel that some attention was given to them. And, and hopefully it's as good, if not better, than these. Yeah, we'll have to uh, recruit a few more ladies. I think this last time all we had was Abby and Renee. The time before, at least, we had Abby, Renee, and Scribe. So we could have filled up a barbecue mm. sketch with girls. We'll have to make sure we have a, a recruit a little bit better. Maybe we can get Julie Hoverson out or... That would uh, be cool. I don't know who else we could get. What get some more lady podcasters but wasn't it it was two years ago at media expo where they talked about podcasting and how unbelievably male heavy it is because there's lots of really heavy males podcasting (sighs) that's true one of them sitting right across the table from you sir not as heavy as you were a month ago yeah but unfortunately not as light as i should be (laughs) When you only eat hay for your third meal of each day, I, I guess that cuts down on something. The problem is they don't have the third stomach to uh, actually digest that. So I wind up just vomiting it back up and then I became bulimic. And that's bad, too. Is it bad? <laughs> that's Christy Turlington. The point I was going to make, guess it doesn't matter. No, there was a point. Shoot, what was it? Oh, the, 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 the solution would be uh, if we didn't have enough girls... To just farm out all these parts and say, you read this part and you read that part and it would be an audio drama kind of thing. But that's missing the point. The point of these is everybody is in one room and we perform it as though it's a little play, as though it's a sketch in front of people. Mm -hmm. You actually play off each other. And that's cool. Yeah, there's this moment when Brian goes, yeah, right. And he wasn't (laughs) supposed to. He was supposed to actually be agreeing with you. And we it just cracked me and everybody else up because it just you're complimenting your kid and he goes yeah right and and really he was just supposed to be saying yeah right let me talk about my kid but he was just like yeah right Uh, i don't know that sort of thing is is really delightful I, i wish we could go to more of these things didn't you say that somebody invited us to dragon con yeah somebody invited us to dragon con just hours ago then i don't know that that can happen Barring substantial donations. <laughs> but, uh, well, I guess we'll have to see what the next six months bring, because it's approximately, not quite that far away, but close to that. Maybe five months. And But, yeah, by the time this episode comes out, who knows? It may have been in the past. Because <laughs> this is, is this on the schedule, or is this just an evergreen episode, and when we have a week with nothing, we'll post this? Well, it's on the schedule, But we are recording it a little ahead of time, so we could bump it up, but we won't bump it back. It will run when it's supposed to run, or it will run early. Now, you're not a fan of Saturday Night Live. I think you've made that clear over the years. It is the benchmark of all my Mm -hmm. comedic... uh, I don't dislike Saturday Night Live, but... but... One thing that we can both agree on is sometimes when there's a sketch that is successful, they will beat it into the ground. Mm -hmm. It's like two weeks have passed and they do it again. And, you know, it's, it's, it's too bad. It's totally understandable from my point of view because, you know, when there's characters and the audience applauds and cheers just seeing them show up or whatever and they, they have things that, they, you know, are guaranteed to, ha- to get a laugh, wouldn't you go to that well instead of taking a risk on something the audience doesn't know? But I don't want this to be like that. So how long after this episode do we wait before we do the next one? Yeah, a week. <laughs> no, I yeah, I mean I have them scheduled to be about 6 months apart. Okay. I kind of think I might bump the second one up some just because it's new media expo related and I would kind of like them it not to be so long ago that the new media expo happened that were people are just like, "Really? You're still talking about new media? That was in friggin' January." Of 14. <laughs> Move on. Las Vegas has long since fallen into the <laughs> sea, guys, and you're still... So, yeah, it's possible I might move it up, but... Uh... Well, and, and I hear you, and it's, that's something that we've talked about behind the scenes, and maybe we've talked about it on the show, but I always feel self-conscious if a story by me falls too close to a story by me. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I was like, oh, shoot, we've got to have at least three or four other stories in between mine. And, you know, I think that's just part of my sickness 
Uh, I don't think anybody else would have a problem with that. It's like, hey, we got another one of my stories done in time. Our choice was to have two back-to-back or to wait three weeks and have somebody else in between. It's just a no-brainer that you would go with whatever is done. But I do feel kind of weird. I don't know. I feel icky when I see my name on there too much. Help me. Help me stop this. I've got a baseball bat that I could use uh, for some... I'll stop recognizing my name, I'm sure. Therapy for you. (laughs) Anyhow, um, I guess you could probably guess where this, the origin of this story came from. Everybody with kids thinks that theirs is the best. Cute little things that their kids do, uh, they have to let other people know about. And this sketch could have been meaner. Uh, In retrospect, I kind of wish that it had been. I, I wish that they had started putting down each other's kids while trying to lift up their own. But, eh, well, you know, it didn't work out that way. It went a unusual direction, though. I mean, there was this guy with the child who's never gone to the bathroom and that can heal fictional characters even, much less real people. That was not what I expected when you told me you were going to write a story about people who bragged about their children. So that's cool. Now, explain to me, you had this character that I was originally supposed to play, but it actually turned out to be Brian that played, who was obsessed with old action heroes. Now, I was surprised. But they were the obscure ones. It couldn't be like, our, I love yeah. all those Schwarzenegger movies. It had to be like C-list Yeah, I was, I was really surprised that these, I, I assumed you were just making up names. And I started looking, these, I'm like, there is a Jeff Speakman, and there is a Cynthia Rothrock, and... Uh, Red Brown, you go down the whole... Sorry, Brian goes down the whole filmography. See, to me, that guy is you. And so even though Brian reads the lines, I'm like, wait, big, do that line over again. You're like, I didn't do that guy. (laughs) But yeah, it was just like, I I was amazed just to learn that these people even exist. How do you even know these? Did you like... You know these people already. You just have an encyclopedic knowledge of film actors somehow... So you knew who these people were without having to like look them up and research them, didn't you? Yes and no. I did have to look them up and find out like, all the titles of these. I've never seen a Cynthia Rothrock movie. Never seen it. Not Jeff even Speaker Above movie. the Law? Not even Above the Law. <laughs> uh, I have seen a couple of Red Brown movies, but that was you know when I was a little kid, before I knew who Red Brown was. You have probably seen a Red Brown movie. He played Captain America in the 19... Uh, was it 79 made-for-TV movie? I did see that when I was, like, in 1979. Like, I was so... I remembered it as the greatest movie of my frigging life, (laughs) though. I'll tell you that much. I thought about that movie for... And, you know, I couldn't remember a thing about it other than... I think Captain America had a motorcycle, right? Yeah, I think it was I remember the motorcycle. Evil Knievel than Captain America. And, yeah, and he had the shield, and I remember it being just amazing, but... That's all I can remember from it. But yeah, I would think about it years later. Oh, that, there was that Captain America movie that was so rad. I don't remember anything about it, but Captain America was in it. And that was rad. Which is kind of weird that it would make that kind of an impression, but no impression at all on me. You know what I mean? It's not like I remembered a thing from it, other well, than that he had a motorcycle. <laughs> and yeah, I've never seen it. And, and you have, so there's that one. But, you know, Marvel really tried its hand in the 70s. On television, and we had the the Hulk. The Hulk was the, old, the only Big. hit, but you know the Spider-Man series with Nicholas Hammond, and uh, there was a Doctor Strange movie, and I believe Captain America had two made-for-TV movies. The, these were always backdoor pilots, you know, kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Where if the TV movie was successful, we would make a series from it, and the only one that was successful was The Incredible Hulk, and uh, you know, it's too bad. Because what might have been had any of the, and the thing is I, I haven't seen him I don't I've never been able to sit through the Nicholas Hammond Spider Man stuff not even when I was a kid yeah it was me just neither. so boring nothing happened in these things <laughs> and today of course you know they would try but in those days it was like well you know it's television and we can't afford to have him fight supervillains or anything like that so why even try let's just have it all take place at the newspaper with Peter Parker interacting with Jameson. When you could have at least had him like fighting street thugs and stuff like that, but no, it's like, nah, eh. I don't know what the mentality behind that was because it wasn't like Fox 
with the X-Men or Fantastic Four where it's just like, well, we're going to lose the rights if we don't make a movie. So we don't care how good the movie is. We've got to make it. I guess they were trying to see what would succeed and what wouldn't. And now it's time for Rish's off-topic ramble of the week. So yeah, I just thought it would be fun. You, you know how it is. As a writer, you try and come up with something quirky for a character. And I just thought it would be neat if this guy liked the really bad action stars <laughs> rather than, you know, because if somebody has seen every movie that that Stallone has made or, or, or a higher caliber than that, you know, it's like, oh, I've seen all the Jackie Chan movies and the ones that were released only in Hong Kong are way better than the ones that were released over here, whatever you could see. Somebody to get in behind that because Jackie Chan is he's a living legend. You know what I mean? It's like that guy earned his, uh, do you his remember, time in the sun. Do you remember when there was the Internet rumor out that he died on set? And I even sent you the link to it saying, oh, man, Jackie Chan died. And then within a couple hours, we discovered that it was false. I don't remember. that. You don't remember that? Well, he's a living legend, so it doesn't really matter. Yeah, I don't. I'm not sure anything can kill Jackie Chan, not even Will Smith's kid. So that's what I was saying: is 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 somebody like Jackie Chan has a credibility to him. But if somebody likes one of these guys <laughs> that nobody likes, you know, some third rate backyard studio is like, we're going to try and make this guy a star, and they failed. And this guy loves those movies. I just thought that, that would be funny for a blowhard character to have. And I don't know, maybe it's not funny, maybe it's only me, but when it's just like Jeff Speakman, the name Jeff Speakman is funny to me. (laughs) And when they'd be like, the newest action, the action star of the 90s, Jeff Speakman in, and I'd just be like, come on, the name Jeff Speakman bars him from being an action star of the 90s. That name is stupid. It's just not a tough name. So, uh, yeah, that was our barbecue sketch. Um... Yeah, I, I'll try harder on the next one, guys. I, you I will this wasn't not. Good to... yeah. Okay, but wait, wait. Before we close, uh, in defense of parents, why don't you why don't you say a, a couple of words in defense of parents? Everything your kid does is special and beautiful, and it's the first time a child has ever done this. Correct? Well, I don't know if it's the first time a child has ever done this, but usually it'll be the first time that your child has ever done it. So it's awesome and special for you. Yeah, I don't know. It's really cool. My kid is always, you know, right now I've got a one who's just turned two. And that's a interesting age where they do all sorts of crazy fun stuff. And uh, they're insane and they run around. And they, sometimes you wonder if they will live to three because they do things like grab the black permanent marker and draw all over things like keyboards and book covers and carpet and it makes you want to kill them but also they do all sorts of other stuff that's fun and and it's a good thing that they do that i suppose so that you're you're so endeared to them that you can't just strangle them when they do all the other stupid things but uh when you i'm sure have run into that yourself uh with all the time that you spend with your nephews and when they say the cute things like you told me the story of your your nephew sounding out the words as he uh drove along in the car and he got the word that starts with s h and then oh i think i know what this word is <laughs> no, I forgot about that. And, he, and he said the word that he think he, he thought he'd figured it out and his mother was not too pleased by the word that he figured out I that that what was, was the word really though do you remember shop probably or something like that i don't know like we passed a store and it said auto shop but uh, oh and everybody has the stories and and in your head it's just like so cute because you love this person mm-hmm. like my nephew we dressed him as thor and i took him to his very first comic convention last september and there was a dude you know a six foot four guy or whatever with a huge beer belly dressed as thor there that was just like oh little man whoa 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 come here come here come here come here Hey, dude, take a picture of me with the kid. And, you know, he put his arm out and my nephew like sat on this guy's arm. (laughs) And so there was a picture of my nephew dressed as Thor with a huge dude dressed as Thor. But my nephew thought that this was really Thor. Like (laughs) there was a Thor and he has met him. And the weird thing is this guy didn't look like Chris Hemsworth. Mm -hmm. But 
my nephew is still convinced that he has met Chris Hemsworth. And <laughs> you, do you remember when I met the real Thor? Don't show him adventures in babysitting because you might confuse him. To, but he, everybody has a ton of stories like this yeah, that are cute of... to them and that they're, they're, and they're worth telling because, again, you know, it's like this has amused me and it's amused my wife. And, and yeah, I wish I had milked this sketch for, you know, a couple more minutes of that mm-hmm. kind of stuff. Of, of Oh, this time my boy did this kind of thing. But I don't know. I just I, I was worried that they're too long and, and never having performed them in front of an audience, you don't know. Right. What's going to fly and what's not. Yeah. The kids, yeah. I mean, that's that's one of those things. I actually have a blog, a family blog that's specifically dedicated to recording that kind of stuff so that in the future I'll remember. And I already have forgotten like half of the, I'll go back to the post that I wrote a few years ago and I'll read them and I'll be like, whoa, I totally forgot about that. You know, and it cracks me up to see the things that my kids did. And my, I, I don't know if every parent does these kind of things, tries to remember them or writes them down or whatever. I, I know that my uh, dad has a piece of paper from 1943 or whatever when he was like five years old and his mom asked him what he wanted for Christmas. And he said, well, I want a hammer and a saw. And she's like, a hammer and a saw? What do you want a hammer and a saw for? And he says, well, if a dog chased me, I could hit it over the head with a hammer and knock it out. And then I could saw its head off. And she's like, what? Where the crap did this come from? That is the most hilarious thing I've ever heard a four-year-old tell. And so she wrote it down on a piece of paper. And so, that you know, that's one of those stories that, you know, 1943, when my dad was four years old, we still remember about it. And that, yeah, that's something that's really cool that you can do. I guess this is kind of the same thing, recording. You know, I, I, you've done the same thing because that story of the sounding out the words was on your blog. That's how I know that story. Oh, was it? I, I have no memory. I believe it's one of your babysitter of the year kind of stories oh, yes. that you always put on there. It's, it's just the same kind of thing, and it's, it's great fun. And, you know, when the kids get older, they enjoy to hear them. You know, I, it would be neat to hear stories about me. When I was a kid, unfortunately, nobody knows any stories of me when I was a kid because there's too many kids in my family for anybody to remember. They can't tell us apart. They'd be like, "Oh, that. Oh, I thought that story was about uh, my older brother. I heard it told differently before. Oh, oh, maybe that was it." <laughs> and your dad says, "Yeah, we would have written down that little anecdote, but we had to eat that week. <laughs> oh, okay. We ate the paper that we would have written it on." <laughs> We sliced it up, put it in a pot, and boiled it for a while and called it spaghetti noodles. Yeah. Jeff Speakman. <laughs> uh, all right. Thanks for listening, everybody. I hope you enjoyed the uh, episode. We'll have another one of these coming down the line. Should we give them a, a, a preview and just give let them know what the title is? I think it was some play on words. It was B Progressive. Be, be progressive. Okay. B E. It doesn't work as well when you spell it out like it does in the song. Because it's the B E A G G R E S S I V E. But B E P R O G R E S S I V E just doesn't work as well. Oh, well. But yeah, look forward to that. It's coming in a, yeah, a few months. Another. Wonderful little barbecue sketch. Wonderful. Hopefully, Don't oversell. you won't be offended by this one because this one could offend. Uh, you know, part of me kind of wants it to offend. Yes. All right, folks, thank you for listening, and uh, may your next child never once go to the bathroom. That's right. That's what I pray every day. My son is potty training right now. How about that? I don't want to hear about it. <laughs> Thank you for listening to the Dune Steve Audio Fiction Magazine. If you enjoyed today's episode, please drop by iTunes and give us a five-star rating. We'd be eternally grateful you did. The Dune Steve is released under a Creative Commons attribution, non-commercial, no derivatives license, meaning share it with everyone, but don't sell it or change it. Good night, everybody. Take two.
Is this really what you guys want to be talking about tonight? Wow. How did the announcer man get that grapply voice? Uh, uh, what was that one called? Terrible. Got a newborn, and then there's the apple of my eye. He's ten. That's him over there. The boy in the pool? No, the one... <laughs> <laughs> no, the one who pushed him in the pool. Annabeth does all right, guys. Sure, sure. I bet she probably excels in other ways. Yeah, right. <laughs> you could say that, sure. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I, gave, I gave you big sparks. <laughs> the douchery really is strong in this one. <laughs> I was thinking that because you were like, yeah, it's more of a douche. And then I've been reading my part and I haven't been the douche. No, I, I got it. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, you've got a nice daughter. Well, she's no Cynthia Rothrock, but she's all right. <laughs> <laughs> too many phones in this room. My daughter always smells good. Always. Not my son, no. He smells pretty ripe. Not really something to boast about, John. Sure it is. He smells like a little man, like a boy should. My daughter has never once gone to the... <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> he can't say it. <laughs> Deep breath. My daughter has never once gone to the bathroom. Have a good one, Polly. You too. The band? No, this is Beatles, actually. George, <laughs> Paul, and John. Fox with the X-Men or Fantastic Four, where it's just like, well, we're going to lose the rights if we don't make a movie, so we don't care how good the movie is. Whatever happened with the Fantastic Four anyways? I heard, like, years ago they were rebooting it, and they still, I still haven't seen a thing. Oh. There are times, Mr. Data, there's, when I envy you. Do you not know? Okay, it? well, in, this is this is ancient history. In fact, this is an outtake for this episode. But if you want to be disappointed, look and see who they cast on this thing. Miles Tello Teller is playing Reed Richards. Miles Teller is Morgan's age. Reed Richards is an old man. He's got gray on his temples in 1962. Kate Mara is playing Sue Storm. Oh, God, I hate Kate Mara. I hate Kate. Oh, oh. <laughs> Jamie Bell is playing Ben Grimm. Do you know who Jamie Bell is? Jamie Bell is. Oh, geez, what's this guy that says just because I like ballet doesn't make me a poof? Billy Elliot. Jamie Bell is Billy Elliot. He's about 93 pounds. He's British, playing Ben Grimm, the thing. And Michael B. Jordan is playing is Johnny Michael Storm, Jordan, the, black the brother of Sue Storm. Uh, he's a black guy, but he's the only one where I was like, okay, I can see that guy being Johnny Storm. <laughs> he's the only one where I don't go, oh, well, this is the worst casting ever. And he's the wrong color. But, I mean, the, the biggest problem is, why isn't Sue also African-American? I mean, that solves a lot of problems if you're just like, okay, well, these two are siblings. And, and you know, the people that are, are behind it are like, have you ever heard of adoption? It's like, but why? Why would you, why even bring that into it? Why not just have them look like brother and sister? Anyway, I'm not going to see this movie. In the same way that I've told people I'm not going to see Superman versus Batman. June 19th, 2015. Um, sorry, guys. I, also, I mean, I wouldn't want to see a movie with Miles Teller in it anyway. But him as Reed Richards, holy cow. I mean, because this guy has always been intended as being older than everybody else. You know what I mean? To, to have Jack Kirby draw him in his first appearance with the, the gray at his temples, you know, it's just like, okay, this is sort of a father figure. To the others and all this, and uh, but uh, this kid, the kid that, that and uh, he, you've probably seen him in uh, some movie or whatever. Miles Teller, I can't think of a single thing that he's been in, but I just remember that every once in a while I see this guy's face and I go, Oh, ooh, gosh, I don't like that guy. Who is that kid? And you know, now he's Reed Richards. And there was actually talk, I mean, I don't know that it's coming yet. That at the time we're recording this, they haven't cast 
Doctor Doom yet, but there has been serious talk that a woman is going to play Doctor Doom. This is just one of those. Hey, let's let's change for change's sake. Mm-hmm. This is the t- these times they are changing. When people complain about the 19- the two thousand five Fantastic Four, the main complaint is not it was too much like the source material. Uh, okay, so back to the real show. Back to the beat, y'all. Yeah. How did we get on that? Oh, fantastic! The, the, the Fantastic Four. I was saying it's not like yeah, Fox they just made them cashing in on this so that they can. The, the name Jeff Speakman. That name is stupid. It's just not a tough name at all. And that reminds me of of uh, and this is our second outtake for today. Are you aware of a, an actor named Scott Speedman? No. The first time I heard the name Scott Speedman. I guess he was on, I think it was Felicity, one of those shows that I never watched, but women watched. Many people And they did. thought he was dreamy and stuff like mm. that. But if, we went, my best buddy and I went to the premiere of the Dawn of the Dead remake, the 2004 one. And uh, whenever some celebrity was walking down the red carpet, the, you know, I, all the people around us would be like taking pictures and saying who, you know, who it is. And somebody said, Scott Speedman. And I, I just started to laugh because I was just like, that is the stupidest. And I said it. I was like, geez, that's the stupidest made, made a Scott Speedman. Really, really Scott Speedman. And he stopped and he looked over at me, this curly haired, square jawed actor, because I was going, Scott Speedman. And he goes, hey, how are you doing? And then he kept walking. And I was like, why did that guy say, oh, that's really a guy? And he just looked at me because I was making fun of his name. Uh, he was the main, the love interest in the Underworld films, which came later. Yes, Scott Speedman. What was the name of Jeff Speakman's big hit breakout film that didn't break out? I don't know. Uh, you know, it doesn't even matter. Breakout film. So. Uh, do you remember when um, Brian Bosworth tried to break out as a, an action star in Stone, Stone Cold? Cold, 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 Cold. Mm-hmm. Starring, Starring Brian, Brian Bosworth. Bosworth. They didn't even bother saying the action hero of the 90s. And now. Side Roads, Slaughterhouse Rock, Blades of the Sun, Lionheart, The Perfect Weapon. Uh, that's what it was. Scott, Scott Speedman is, 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 is The Perfect Weapon. Where are you going, man? I hate, I hate hit stop. You should we at have. least got to finish. Long time you stop ago. doing these asides like it's not 12.30 already. Is it really 12.30? Yeah, so it was 11, like 45 when you got here. <laughs> um, back to the beach, y'all. Y'all. But the kid is not my son. <laughs> Don't think twice. Don't think twice. Ooh. Cooper sat on a rock and rewound the last shot while Bobby adjusted the gorilla mask. Rewound? Do they say rewind anymore? Do they say scroll back? Ugh. That shot would have been perfect if you hadn't caught the mask on that branch. Cooper beamed. Let's shoot it again, just like that. Good. Bobby grumbled. It's getting damn hot in this thing. He pulled the mask back on and crouched behind a bush. Oh, these are three different kids, not two different kids, right? There's Cooper and Bobby. And that's it? Oh, Cooper and Bobby, okay. Cooper and Bobby. And then there's Cooper and also Bobby. All right. Jack slid carefully along the mountain, one hand guiding him in an easy grip on the rock, one hand still clutching his precious sack. (laughs) Jack looked up to see the golden glider descending toward him, her wings and chest sparkling as bright as her eggs, each beautiful feather the same shining gold. Her talons were gold as well, each as long as his forearm, each ending in a razor-sharp point. Jack screamed as the claws ripped into his scrotum. Um, back to the beach, y'all. Y'all. Bum, bum, bum. Bum, 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 bum,